Few games have tried to tackle this, at least for Polish people, important historical topic. But most of them were either mid-tier or made by an inexperienced team. Let's see how today's game, 63 Days, handles it. This game is set during the Warsaw Uprising of 1944, when Poland was under Nazi German occupation. And here you can get Polish point of view. Besides, I love shooting the Nazis. I don't know why. <laughs> If you are a bit older, you might remember the Commando series, and if you are younger, maybe you have played War Monglers from Destructive Creations. That game also took inspiration from Commandos. 62 Days is a stealth isometric real time strategic game set in some truly grim times, where even kids had to become soldiers. This game requires a bit of patience and a knack for planning short term strategies. But just so you know, this isn't Wolfenstein, so going full BJ Blazkowicz isn't an option here. Well, maybe just a little. The main story revolves around the Warsaw Uprising, but the developers made it more personal. You are not commanding a whole partisan squad, even though your heroes are part of the underground Polish resistance. Instead, you control only a few characters. Each one has something to say, sharing their perspective as important events unfold. Early on, like in the tutorial and the first and half missions, you control two brothers. Later, we'll gain control over more characters. The game is designed so that while you are learning their dramatic stories. You are also learning about the Warsaw Uprising itself, so if you are in war, World War II history, you are bound to pick up something new. Youngster and Lex are the first heroes you will meet on your journey, and the story kicks off just before August 1st, when W Hour officially started the uprising. Through them, you will learn the game basics in the tutorial and then tackle your first mission. The tutorial explains things well enough, I catch on quickly, but I struggle with the last part, where you had to avoid being spotted. If you are not used to this type of games, like me, it might take a bit to get into the right mindset. As you progress, more heroes join, like Henio, a kid who helps out with his unique skills. Historically, this is accurate, children were involved in the uprising often because they had no other choice, many becoming orphans due to the war. The isometric view lets you scan your surrounding. True, I often find myself missing things that I thought I already checked. Here's where patience and observation come in handy. You have to keep an eye on enemy movements, their field of view and terrain possibilities. Most of the time you can take things slowly, but sometimes you need to plan a sequence of action with your character, executing them with almost perfect timing. One rock move and you might fail. The game helps you with this by offering a scheme mode, where time slows down, allowing you to assign one action to each unit so they can perform actions more in sync. And let me tell you, let me tell you something! F8 and F9 are your best friends in 63 days. F8 lets you set up a quick save and F9 reloads it. Trust me, you'll be using this a lot. Quick stop, if you like what I'm showing and explaining about indie games or lesser known projects, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you, now back to the video. As you start your journey, you may notice there aren't too many missions, but don't worry, they are long, and how long that depends on your skill and experience. Sometimes I've got stuck not knowing what to do next, I eventually figure it out, but a hint system would have been nice in certain spots. The game isn't always clear about what to do, which can be a bit frustrating, but then again, every player will approach it differently based on their skill level. I prefer stealthier approach, but sometimes you are forced to take risks. The combat mode is both fun and deadly. You control one hero while the AI controls the others, and the camera zooms in. The game shifts from stealth to action, but be careful, a few hits and you are down. Before jumping into combat mode, make sure you are really needed. Charging into 5 or 6 soldiers is a quick way to get gunned down. It's realistic though, your character are partisan, and the enemy are fully trained soldiers, so it's no surprise your character aren't sharpshooters. I both understand and don't understand the choices they made about skills. Each character has different perks. For example, Lynx is stronger and can quietly take down Nazis, move bodies or lift youngster, but he is afraid of heights, so no climbing for him. Youngster, on the other hand, is smaller and can climb, but to eliminate enemies he prefers throwing knives. Downside is that it's noisy, because well soldiers scream when they get hit by a knife. Other characters also have unique traits based on their physical abilities, however I'm a bit disappointed that only Lynx can move bodies, sure Youngster is smaller but he could still drag a body, even if it made some noise. Also, while Youngster can throw knives, he can't quietly stab an enemy from behind. His limitations force you to jungle between characters, combining their abilities to solve puzzles, which is fun but can also be a little confusing. We've just questioned why. 
I played a patch version of the game, but there are still some bugs. Some are minor, like character getting stuck in the environment, but others are more frustrating, like when scripts don't trigger properly. If character starts talking to each other, it's best not to do anything, as actions can cut off the dialogue. Also, I can at looping sounds like trucks and radios glitching out and repeating the same half second noise. Sometimes you are forced to perform a certain action before you can do another, even when it seems like you should be able to complete the task. It's not exactly a bug, but it feels like a design flaw that leads to unnecessary confusion. I appreciate how the game treats the worst of Uprising with respect. It feels personal, with the heroes frequently talking to each other, adding lighter moments amidst the grim reality. Some people complain that the environment is always the same, destroyed city in grey tones. But come on, sorry, the Wars of Uprising didn't happen on the tropical island. If you want to see what it was really like, go watch the pianist, at least partially you can spot the brutal reality of these times. It wasn't pretty, and the game reflects that well. I also like how 62 Days doesn't shy away from showing the darker side of both Nazi soldiers and the Soviets. Historically speaking, the Soviets weren't much better and the game portrays that accurately. Personally, I like the art style. Some people say the design is bad, but I don't get it. It's not a AAA game, sure, but it looks good and you can zoom in to see plenty of detail. There is even support for AMD FSR and although the game automatically set everything too high for me, I lowered a few settings to keep my PC quiet. I don't mean that the game will gonna harm my PC, but I'm taking care of my PC. The game is gloomy, dark and grey, but that fits the setting perfectly. It's not supposed to be a cheerful or colorful game. To be honest, even in today's time, Poland is quite grey. As for the music, it's minimal but effective, the sounds of tracks, radio soldiers talking and your character interacting are what fill most of the audio space. The background music changes with the situation, becoming more intense during action scenes, which works well. 62 Days isn't without its issue, but I had fun. Sure, I encountered some bugs like an enemy behavior not triggering correctly, which made progress tricky at time. The sound glitches were annoying too, but I like that you can switch the voices to Polish, which made my experience more immersive. The Warzone of Praising is handled with care, and this game does a much better job than previous attempts. A little more optimization and a few bugs fixes would be great, but overall, I enjoy it. Maybe it's because I'm Polish, but I found myself playing for hours. I definitely recommend giving it a try. The developers definitely gain experience from Warmongers and 62 Days is a quite solid, engaging game. As always, if you wanna check out the game, there is a link in the description for you. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to hear about smaller or indie projects. Thanks and see you later. Bye.